I'm going on almost 15 years of using Linux. And I have to say, I've had some great experiences using Linux, and I've had some experiences I'd rather not discuss. But about a month ago, I did a video that basically said Linux is just too effing hard. And pretty much showed you how to install Garuda, and how to get it up and running for a new user in less than an hour. And not only was that on the install, but that was also installing all of the applications you were going to use. Now, having said that, I left Garuda on my production machine. When I say production machine, that is the machine I use to make all of my videos. And let me tell you something. This is the best experience with Linux I have ever had. That's what we're going to go over today on eBuzz Central. Before we get started with today's video, I want to recommend everybody go over and check out the eBuzz Central store. We got a lot of great apparel over there. We've got mugs, hats, and we got a couple new additions I would like to point out. They're kind of a new take on the ACDC. I've got Sudo Highway to Shell. I got that available in black and white, and then Sudo Back in Bash. They're a really cool take on a great rock band. And I like the layout of them. So if you'd like to help the channel out a little bit, zip on over, check it out. Now, if you go over to the store and you don't find what you want, or you have an idea of something you would like to see on the store, please drop that in the comments below. Every little bit helps the channel. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and go back to my desktop. Now we're back at the desktop. And the first thing you're going to always hear, whether it's on a forum or whether it's on videos, is that Garuda runs too heavy. Now I took a screenshot before I turned OBS on just so I could kind of show you what I was dealing with at rest. And at rest, I'm using about 710 megabytes. And that's before anything started up. But what you will notice is if you go up here, you look, I have very low CPU usage. I have a couple spikes here when I went online or I opened up a browser. But other than that, I haven't had any issues at all with too much memory or memory drain. Now, when I ran Manjaro, I used to have a lot of issues with lost memory or memory drain. I haven't experienced that on Garuda. Garuda has been really tight. It's been awesome. And it's handled, like I said, everything I have thrown at it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my HTOP or system monitor. And right now, I'm running at about 1.5 gigabytes. Now, I do have James DSP for Linux running in the background and OBS running in the background. But when those get shut down and I'm done recording my video, it falls back down around six to 800 megabytes. It fluctuates a little bit. Let me tell you something, for a KDE desktop, that is very impressive. Now, a lot of times when you get it installed and you start installing your applications, you start having a lot of errors. This was a consistent issue with me on Manjaro. I love the overall performance of Manjaro the whole time I was on it, but there always seemed to be an issue, something I had to fix, something that took time away from my work that I had to fix. Now, having said that, I was happy with Manjaro because it really didn't ever take me that long to fix the issues. But let me tell you how refreshing it is to have an Arch-based operating system that I can put on my machine. Other than one thing that I'll bring up here in a little bit, I have not had to jump through hoops to do anything. And one of the reasons, I believe, is if you go up and you look up Garuda here, you've got what's called your Garuda Assistant. And this is a very important tool. System update, I run on a daily basis. Now, if I tried this on Manjaro, or I updated every time Manjaro come out with an update, there was always a little something I would lose. Something would not necessarily break, but it would tweak it to a point that I couldn't fix it back to the way I had it. And I just had to deal with it. I just thought that was the nature of the beast and just lived with it. You don't have to anymore with Garuda. Right here, you've got your system update. You've got refresh mirror list. This tool right here has helped me out quite a bit because I can just zip on over here and click on system update. And they're just scripts that run in the background and they pop up and it will actually show you the terminal, what it's running while it's doing it. Or you can go to console down here and actually put the update in yourself 
and be good to go and not have to worry about it. It just makes it really easy, especially if you're a newer user, because that's what I hear all the time. I can't believe you're recommending Garuda to new users. Why not? The learning curve on Garuda is really not that steep. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, and I want to show you something else. We come back down here. You go to Garuda Welcome, and I'm going to open this one up. This right here is probably my favorite because it has everything in one place. You've got your Garuda Assistant, your Garuda Gamer, your Garuda Settings Manager, Partition Manager, Add and Remove Software, Chaotic AUR, your website. It gives you everything right here that you need. And I'm going to pin that previous video at the end of this video so you can watch it. It's me going through the complete install of Garuda and really how easy it was to set everything up. Now, a lot of people will point out that if you look down here, I have the panel and I got away from the latte dock that comes with Garuda. It was a really smooth and easy change for me. I love latte dock, but at the same time, I like the default panel better. Plus, latte dock was a little heavy for me. All it came down to was just going up, quitting latte dock, coming down here, going over to Octopi, and opening up Octopi, and just going up and looking latte dock up and uninstalling it. Now, if you do that yourself, or here, I'm sorry, just put in latte and click on it. All you got to do is instead of install, it says remove right here. You click on it. It'll show you the dependencies that are getting taken off. You click OK and then come up here and hit this check mark and it takes latte dock off. Now, once you do that, all you got to do is right click on your screen, come down here and add panel and just add a default panel, which is what I did. And then after I did that, of course, I pinned all the applications that I use most of the time on it and then I made it a floating dock if you go over here and hit edit mode and go to more options you got a floating panel I'm sorry I said floating dock you've got a floating panel or a standard panel and if you look down at the bottom that is what it looks like now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and go back to edit mode go to more options put my floating panel back up and if you see you're good to go down there just to give you an idea of what kind of hardware I'm running this on it is an IdeaPad 3 that I come across with 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 8th or 9th generation i5. I'm not really sure on that yet. I'll get more information on that in the future. But I'm also running an external monitor that I use when I do most of my video editing. It's just easier for me to see. No problems heck, hooking up the second panel. Garuda recognized it right off the bat and I have had no issues at all. And one thing I do like is if you take a screenshot with Spectacle, it actually takes a screenshot of both monitors. I like that. It's probably nothing new to you guys, but I've had issues in the past with screenshot tools. Now, as you can see on the bottom, I've also changed. I want to go ahead and let you all know this. I changed because a lot of the times what people complain about is they do not like the icons Garuda comes with. So I come down here to icons and you have plenty of them to choose from. But what I did is I went and downloaded it icon set called UOS. And if you think they look familiar, they are. They're the same icons that Deepin uses. And I just love the overall look of them better. It makes it look a little bit more sharp and classy to me. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below. And then when you open up Dolphin Manager, you get better looking icons over here and just easier to see things. And there's that screenshot I took a while ago, so let's go ahead and delete that. I did run into an issue down here. I'll just let you know I've got Dolphin, Fire Dragon, Microsoft Edge because I need it for some of the work that I do. And then I've got Casus Guard, Console, Gnome Boxes, OBS is running in the background, Caden Live, Shotcut, VLC, GIMP, Only Office Desktop, Spectacles, your screenshot, Simple Note, great tool if you need a alternative to OneNote or what is Google's version of it. I can't remember. See, I've already pushed Google out of my mind and I don't even remember the name of their application. And then Kodi and then Qubit Torrent. Now, if you are somebody that actually runs Kodi, sometimes when you try to install Kodi from Octopi, let's go up here and look it up. Let's open up Octopi. And we will go ahead and look for Kodi. Now, right here, it's got Kodi 19.4-5. I tried installing it from here, but I was missing several dependencies. Now, this isn't just a Garuda issue. This is a Linux issue across the board. I had issues with it 
uh, on my son's laptop that runs Pop! OS. I've had issues on it with uh, my daughter's laptop that has Linux Mint on it. Sometimes Cody would not gather all dependencies. So as a person that uses Cody, what I ended up having to do was install Flatpak. Now, a lot of people, when you install Flatpak on Garuda, are like, okay, where are the instructions? Just go over and do a search. Install Flatpak on Garuda. Or you could even put install it on Arch. Do your search, and you'll see flatpak.org right here. Just come down here, and that's the simple command I used to install Flatpak onto the system. Then I restarted my system. And then all I did was install Cody Flatpak Terminal. And the search will come up. And you just scroll down a little bit. And there it is right there. Installing Cody Flatpak via terminal. I just put Flatpak install flathub tv.cody.capital K on Cody. Installed. Took about 15 seconds. And then I had Cody installed. Now, if you're not familiar with Cody, it's just a multimedia center. If you've got a lot of movies and things like that that you want to use, you can. Me, I just go and use it for a lot of content that I already own. And subscriptions I already have, whether it be Disney Plus or Netflix. You can integrate that if you would like to. That's truly up to you. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, what I do want to do is go back over to settings. I want to scroll down and go about this system. And it's running KDE version 5.25.4. We are running the 5.18.16 Zen kernel. I have the Intel Core i5, like I said, 7.3 gigabytes of RAM, which is really 8. The Mesa Intel UHD graphics. It's a Lenovo laptop. And there it shows you it's an IdeaPad 3. Now, I will have to say that this laptop did used to have Windows 11 on it, and it was the slowest, laggiest system I probably have ever used with Windows 11 on it. But when I put Garuda on here, it just came to life. It really did truly come to life. I don't want to keep carrying on and on, but here's what I'm going to say. If you want to give Arch a try, or if you just want to give Linux a try, Garuda makes it simple. Garuda right now, where it is in the timeline of how long it's been out, is ahead of anywhere that Manjaro was at the same time in their development. Like I said, I've had a couple hiccups, but most of those have been with like Cody and things like that. When it comes down to general functionality, when it comes down to just getting your work done, getting things done and moving around the system and working, no issues at all. I'm going to reiterate this because I want you to know how important this is. This is the best Linux experience I've ever had. Now, will it be for you? I don't know. I don't know what your workflow is. I don't know what you do with your computer. But what I'm saying is, if you've got the time, download it, throw it on a USB, give it a shot, run it off of a live USB. I think you will be very, very impressed. It doesn't come with a bunch of bloated software. It does come with what some people would say is gaudy backgrounds and icons and things like that. But those are things that can be changed in less than five minutes. It took me less than five minutes to get rid of the latte dock, add my floating panel, change my icons, and give me something that I myself prefer over what they have out of the box. But other than that, it's the greatest experience I've ever had. Now, I will pin the video at the end of this one. It'll be in my suggested of where I showed you how to step-by-step -step install Garuda and how to go get your software that you want to use. Let's recap. This is Garuda Linux. I've been using it for a month. I've had no issues. It's updated on a daily basis and hasn't broken. It is the best Linux experience I've ever had. Let me know what the best Linux experience you ever had is. Put that in the comments below. And also, is Garuda something you might download, throw on a USB, and take for a test drive? Drop that in the comments below as well. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member right here on YouTube, going over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel, buying us a coffee, or zipping on over to PayPal and throwing us a donation. And I want to take a little time right now to thank the people that make this channel possible, and that's all of my supporters, my YouTube members, and my patrons. Executive producer, 
Misla Krilesia, producer Mitchell Valentino. VIP sponsors are Eugene Lee, Brian Mitchell, Antoine Wilk. All access sponsors Mike DePolis and PJ. Sponsors Cato Gosted, Nitrix Development Team, Chad Jones, David Collins, Marco Lopez, Steve Willard, Eric Crowell, Joel Celerzano, Warlock, Sibius, Art Edwards, Marmaduke, Keith Hefner, and Stein Sailor Audland. Thank you guys. You're the reason this channel exists. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, here are a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source, but sometimes I do do a little Windows bashing and maybe a little Google bashing as well. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.